2023 is already keeping us on our toes. I have no idea how or why this happened, but it's extremely frustrating. But after months of waiting, we're getting a big delivery. You know it's bad when Trent is reading instructions. No amount of rain or snow has stopped us yet. That's it. I'm moving to West Virginia. <laughs> Subscribe and come along today as we take matters into our own hands. I watched a YouTube video, so pretty much know exactly what I'm doing now. What's up guys and good morning. Welcome to our first official vlog of 2023. That already sounds weird to say because it doesn't feel like 2023, but it is 2023. Now, let me just say we have had some developments here at the house. I'm gonna take you downstairs and show you what's going on here. All right, so down here is our basement. As you guys know, we've dealt with flooding and leaks and all types of things over the course of owning this house and building this house. And let me just say, I have no idea how or why this happened, but it's extremely frustrating. Can you see this right here? So that's a pretty significant leak. It was dripping like once every minute for a little bit. And I was like, huh, I wonder if this just needs to be tightened. And then uh, we went to DC. When we came back from DC, it was dripping like maybe once every five or 10 seconds. Now it's dripping like one or two times per second and it's basically dripping a lot. So Brandon is stopping at Peterson's. He's gonna pick up some parts so that we can fix that this morning. We were supposed to get our garage doors delivered today, but they can't get up here because we live on the top of a mountain. So we were supposed to meet him. He said, oh, I'll be ready at 10 a.m. And he just texted me and said, actually, it's gonna be after one. And then uh, today we're supposed to get two feet of snow. So it's gonna be an eventful day. I'm gonna go get dressed. Brandon will be here with parts in no time. I've gotta do some snow removal and get ready for this snow. <sighs> and then we've gotta do plumbing disaster recovery. And then we're gonna continue plumbing the garage. So it should be a fun day. Uh, hopefully Brandon gets here soon and we can get to work. All right, I got the uh, section of our little driveway right there completely cleared, so it is ready for all the snow that's falling. Now, in order to replace the uh, broken line that's in the basement, actually it's the valve that shuts the water off to the house. That's what's leaking. So in order to replace that, we have to shut off the water at the street, which is under two feet of snow right now. And it's not marked, so I don't know exactly where it is. So we're gonna go hunt for it. Good morning, guys. Happy 2023. Unfortunately, fortunately, I don't know. It's snowing again. And we're expected to get 30 to 50 inches in the next couple days. So the snow is going to be nonstop and very gnarly. And we've had this leak in our basement that needs to be taken care of. So bright and early, nice and chilly today, we have to dig up this water main, turn off the water, fix the problem before another, what, three feet of snow? lands on top of the water. Oh, here we go. Are you happy dogs? Oh, look at that. Are you kidding me? First try. Oh, look. There is marked. There's the marker. <laughs> okay. She is shut off. Okay. Oh, the dishwasher's on. Really? Yeah. She got turned off. little bucket up like once a day and now it's filling it up like three times a day so the leak was definitely getting worse I don't understand why this failed hmm. but it did how do we know that there's nothing else leaking in a wall anywhere we pray 
All right. No, Allie, we don't need to be doomsdaying ourselves uh, and assuming that there's going to be leaks everywhere. There's not any leaks. There's one okay. little pinhole leak because this valve failed. This okay. is rare. This shouldn't have happened, but it did. It was easy to fix. It was easy to find. Don't keep yourself up at night. Okay. <laughs> I've become a professional worrier in our homeowner days. <laughs> we should be okay. And if we're not, it's whatever, man. I trust you. There's always the next house, you know? <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> We got the goods? Yeah, we got too many of the goods. Hopefully, oh. did that good enough? I'll hold this. You want to go turn the water back on? That's it? Yeah. I heard a little thing go. And I don't know if that was like pressure inside the pipe or if that was like a little air leak. Uh-oh. I'm nervous either way. Woo! All right, I think we waited long enough. The little rings have probably compressed themselves all the way down. It says you should wait 20 minutes. Hopefully we won't have to worry about leaks down here anymore. I hate saying never because then it always happens. Anyway, we're gonna go turn the water back on and then we're going out to the garage. Heater's been running out there. It's gonna be nice and toasty. We're gonna get to work out there, finishing up all of our cold and hot water lines. And then we'll be able to pressure test out there. On crazy days like today, I am so appreciative of every extra minute of sleep I can get, especially as I've gotten older and with a baby, sleep is so important to me. And that's why I'm super thankful for my mattress from Helix. And Helix Sleep is also the sponsor of today's video. Helix is a premium mattress in a box company that customizes each mattress to fit your unique needs and preferences with a short online quiz. It matches you with the perfect firmness for your body and offers a 100 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty. We've been using Helix for years and the best part is that Helix delivers right to your door. Their premium quilted pillow top offers enhanced comfort layers for pressure relief and targeted ergonomic support, helping improve spinal alignment and reduce back aches. We have the Midnight Lux, Trent's grandparents have the Twilight, and my parents love their Dawn Lux. We love Helix mattresses so much and that's why we are so excited to team up with them and give you guys a great deal. And if you wanna check them out, now is the perfect time. Click our link in the description below and you'll get up to $200 off your Helix mattress plus two free pillows, plus free shipping in the United States. Go check them out. Thank you again to Helix Sleep for sponsoring today's video. Now we are gonna get to work. All right, so we got the water line fixed in the basement. No more leak, all the fittings are good. We double, triple checked everything. If there's a disaster that happens later on, then you know, we should have waited longer on the fittings, but we waited the proper amount of time. So. Now we are back out here in the garage. We've got all of the parts that we need to finish up our plumbing like supply line install here. Our drain system is basically done. We do need to test our new water heater like emergency drain. We're gonna finish doing all of our cold and hot water supply lines right now. Then we can test that. Then we can test the drain. And then plumbing out here will basically be done until we get to the addition over here. Nice. It's really exciting. Cool. Since I was child. So I lied, we're not gonna be able to test the system today because our Upanor shower valve, I think is being delivered like today or tomorrow or it's supposed to be. So we can't test the water system, but 
We got our expansion tank installed on the water heater. All the water heater lines are hooked up. Now I'm gonna put in our thermostatic valve that's gonna basically activate or enable our hot water recirculator. Once the temperature drops below a certain degree, it opens this valve, which allows the water to continue to circulate. I gotta put this in, a couple more fittings and connect our like full hot water recirculating system. And then I think the only thing that needs to go in up here is the shower valve. Nice. Yeah, really nice. I love that we need earthquake protection. I know. How about blizzard protection? Actually, how about flooding protection? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looks good. Hope the inspector thinks so. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I don't think there's any code violations. I think everything should be good. Okay. Uh, oh, we could put this window in. Yeah, we could. I don't really want to like take the plastic off and start doing that and then have this guy call, you know? You mean especially while it's snowing? An inch an hour? Yeah. So I'm having fun shooting in GPS. Maybe it'll just tell him the time. Okay. All right. I appreciate it, Jim. So the garage door guys are concerned about trying to get the doors even halfway up to our house. And like, I, I understand, but uh, we're gonna have them meet us down at a shopping center that's about a half an hour away. And then uh, we're gonna load the, the panels out of his truck into Brandon's bed and we're gonna haul them up here. It's exciting, hopefully we get garage doors today. Even though we're not gonna install them today, we can maybe start trying to figure it out. You just parked this like a couple hours ago. I know. There's no snow on it. What the heck? Wow. The blizzard is gonna continually get worse until like 8 p.m. tonight. It's gonna be really, really gnarly amounts of snow, so. So I Needless to say, this is a crazy storm and we are just, we're pushing through. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Woo! We needed this one today. Enjoy. Thank you. I had to do a quick little coffee stop. The guy's at Walmart, he just barely showed up. We're heading over to get the doors now. And then the scary stuff starts. Getting them up to our house and getting them installed. They didn't have to. That's it. That's it. That's so anticlimactic. Well, what did you think? They were gonna be whole doors? Yes. <laughs> cool. All right, let's go load this up in what's basically rain. We're gonna be yeah. soaking wet by the end of this. Unfortunately. We made it back to the house and successfully got everything unloaded. I don't know if we're actually gonna get to installing these garage doors today, but I do know that the snow is intense. This morning when we started filming, there was no snow on the stairs. And there's now probably, I don't know, six or eight inches. This tree was completely not snowy this morning. Trent was snow blowing, the tractor had no snow on it. Like, it's just coming down really hard and uh, it's going to continue to snow at a rate of 0.8 inches per hour every hour until late tonight. So this week's blizzard is starting off strong. It was very good planning on these guys' part though because when we put the plastic up on the walls of the garage door openings, we put them on the outside. So we can actually leave them up and install the garage doors from the inside and uh, not freeze to death or be like, inundated with snow as it's being installed. As soon as we get these garage doors installed, it'll be more insulated. We can retain some heat. I think we're gonna install a couple more lights. Um, so this place will be almost fully functional. It's too hot in here. It's too hot in here? It's too hot in here. It's a great problem to have. Yeah, the snow is great. I'm really happy about the snow. Good. Not so happy about having to try and figure out how to install these doors now. But we're gonna get it figured out, don't worry. 
You know it's bad when Trent is reading instructions. Yeah. Well, I don't want to die, you know? I appreciate that. I totally die doing this. I didn't know this, but apparently installing garage doors is a potentially lethal business. And Trent has friends in the garage door installation business, and we've heard lots of horror stories about things that can go wrong uh, and ways you can get hurt. And I very much appreciate the fact that he is taking the time to read how to install these correctly and that they're gonna go slow and smooth so that there are no casualties in this process. Also no instructions. Oh. This is like owner's manual. Oh. Oh, wants me to scan this QR code. All right. Trent has done about five minutes worth of reading the instructions and we are good to go. Apparently we're gonna uh, start by framing out one of these garage door openings and see how far we can get. Confidence level? It looks pretty 50-50 to me. Yeah, go either way. <laughs> So basically I think you like put the, the hinges and the brackets and stuff on and you like stack the first panel and then you hang the tracks, like anchor them and then you like just repeat the process and stack the panels until it gets to the top. I watched a YouTube video so pretty much know exactly what I'm doing now. We got everything laid out and the weather stripping for one side of the garage door is fully mounted. And tomorrow we're gonna finish at least getting one door fully installed. For today, I think uh, we're gonna take a break and reread the instructions, make sure we know exactly what we're doing so that there are no hiccups when we start this again. Yeah, we're basically professional garage door installers already just after assembling that first panel. This is <laughs> super easy. I don't know why people are so worried about this. Don't jinx it, Trent. The hard part is the spring, I guess, so we'll see what happens when we get there, but we got that piece of uh, whatever that stuff's called hung up there. It's pretty nice. Weather stripping. Weather stripping. Winter is shaping up to be one for the books. We are having an insane amount of snow this week. It's absolutely amazing because we really need the moisture and the water, but I'm starting to dread springtime because mud season normally happens regardless of how much snow we get. And this year's mud season with everything melting is going to be a monsoon. There's just so much snow already and it's not even like halfway through the winter season. So hopefully the snow keeps up because we really need it but snow removal <laughs> and snow thawing is definitely more challenging this year. during the day when we're working and he's hanging out inside safe and sound and having a blast with Sydney, the babysitter that we've had coming up for a while now. She's been amazing and she drives a Jeep, which is honestly like a blessing. And uh, Brandon's truck is in the shop today, so she actually picked Brandon up on her way in. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Who is it? It's Sydney. Good morning. Trent is struggling out there. <laughs> Hello out Good there. Morning. Good morning. Oh. It's definitely hard work. Even with a machine like this, he's not like manually shoveling. He is still struggling. <laughs> it's it's hard work. Yeah. 
That thing's not light. Yeah. And the snow is like compacted and heavy. And, right. But this works really well. Yeah, this is nice. Zero build up. One of the big problems that we've had to deal with for snow removal is that our roof line pitches directly onto our deck. So not only do we get the snow accumulation of snow falling on the deck, but then when the snow sloughs off the roof, it is normally very heavy. That's like what it takes for it to slough. So when it hits the deck, it compacts the snow and it's like concrete. It's super, super difficult to snow blow or to shovel. That's why, don't worry, we're building a roof over the deck this summer, hopefully this summer. We need to get everything permitted, but the designs are finalized and we hope to not have to have this issue again next winter. But for now, we're still dealing with basically an iceberg every time we try to shovel or snow blow because everything is just so compacted. It's very, very difficult. It's a major, major workout. These guys have been out here for basically almost an hour. That's it. I'm moving to West Virginia. <laughs> That's as best we're gonna get, huh? I don't care, let the deck fall down. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> we basically need an ice pick. <sighs> I'm like having a heart attack, dude. I can sense that I'm in trouble. See her? <laughs> yeah, I see her. <laughs> like, trying to look like he's gonna die. Unfortunately, we did have one major casualty. What, really? Yeah. It's Armageddon. Snowmageddon. Snowmageddon. Now that snow blowing and snow removal is out of the way, we have a major task for today, and that is to put up one or hopefully both of these garage doors before it snows another 50 inches in the next 48 hours. Your calves look massive. Thanks, I've been working out. <laughs> Best Your knees look a little deformed. Your knees look really skinny. <laughs> These? Yeah, there's knee pads. Also, I was trying to read the instructions thoroughly. And basically, the instructions that they gave with this door is not for this door. It's for like all these other different types of doors. And I think the instructions are like pretty similar, but we have a high rise track. So at the very top, there's something called a flag bracket. Mm -hmm. And that's like where you attach your horizontal track and we have like extra pieces to go above that and they're not in the instructions mm. so we're winging it great <laughs> per usual <laughs> it's the blind leading the blind over here That one is identical What is that? I have no idea. How lost are you right now? Pretty confused. Ah! What are those? So this is... Doesn't help me. I'm winging it. Unfortunately, this is turning out to be a much bigger project than any of us have anticipated. Mostly because there are no instructions. There's like some generic instructions for different garage doors, but the type we got are a little bit different. And uh, when they say they're winging it, they are legitimately winging it. And it's a little bit daunting. And uh, I'm sure most of you guys right now are like, oh my gosh, Trent, if you don't know what you're doing, just stop. That garage door could fall on you and kill you. And I I'm not gonna like try to operate it if it's not safe, but I'm pretty sure we can figure it out. I found a different set of instructions. I don't know where these ones came from but they, they seem to have like a little bit more information than what we're working with right now. So <laughs> wish me luck. Hallelujah. I think these are on right. You think? This one's a little bit different than that one, but I had to do that so that they were level. And I think level what? is more important than symmetrical. At least that's what the instructions said. 
There are some brackets that need to go up there that are gonna hold the spring and the torsion bars and bearing plates and all this other weird stuff that I don't quite understand yet. But at least now, the stage that we're at, that both of those tracks and high lift brackets are installed, we're back to putting the hinges on the panels, which I feel really confident in. So, okay. yeah, it's time for some wins. Forever young, or am I faking on the tip of my tongue? There's a sarcasm waiting for you. I'm gonna teach you that in garage door school. <laughs> One way to do it. <laughs> There's six panels. And at the rate we're going, we'll be done by tomorrow night. We'd have to work really fast to be done by tomorrow night. <laughs> you know, There's probably the right way to do this and the fast way to do this. And we're probably doing it neither way. <laughs> but on to the next panel. adjustments that need to take place but the panels are standing in the track I don't know if it's gonna like operate we haven't <laughs> built the top of the track or put the torsion bar or the springs in or wound anything it's one o'clock but you know, we'll probably get this one done today cool basically what you're saying is that was the easy part and now we have to we you have to do the the ceiling bars and the stuff that we also have no idea how to install but it's a little bit more high consequence. All right, so we've been working really hard and using all of our brain power, and I've got this entire track built and hung. I don't have the supports at the end of the vertical track, but I've got it all attached to the wall up there. I've got the bearing plate mounted in our bracket up there. I just need a repeat on this side, get our bearing plate in the middle, and then we gotta get the drive shaft up there, put the springs on it, mount those uh, vertical tracks, and then wind the spring. I think you gotta put a garage door opener on it, but that'll be another day, <laughs> at least. You were telling me that people just do this one, this is a one man job, typically? Yeah. I don't even know how that's possible. No. This if you're is... a garage door guy, let us know how many two man garage door teams you know of, because I only know teams of one. How many but, people does it take to install a garage door? I mean, maybe you like have somebody in your company come and give you a hand if there's like a huge roof like this. Because a lot of ceilings in the garage are like nine feet. Right. So like you could just prop up a two by four to hold that thing instead of like it being 13 feet off the ground. Wow. Oh. It's actually not really snowing that hard right now, uh, but it's super misty and foggy. Uh, you can't really see that far down the street and it's very cold, very, very cold. What are you doing over here? Hi. Did you have a good nap? Come here, Lika. This way. It's been a bit of a grueling day, honestly. The progress is pretty slow and pretty difficult and the snow just keeps on coming which is gorgeous but i know they would have liked to finish this and i just don't think it's going to happen today this is actually a lot harder than i thought it was going to be but you know if i had a journeyman garage door guy here who's showing me what to do it'd probably be pretty simple because like what we're doing is actually not that difficult trying to figure it out and read three different sets of instructions has been a little bit of a challenge so we got the torsion bar set up. Uh, I'm just adjusting the depths off of the wall so that the bar is straight and plumb and level. And uh, as soon as I get this last bearing plate over here moved out just a little bit, we're gonna be able to start running the cable and get the cable wrapped around the drums. And I'm gonna wind the springs. Wow. The scary part. This is why it's dangerous because people get lazy. because It's not like really difficult to spin these, at least not yet. Okay. But I think people, don't like take the danger of it seriously. Like once there's a lot of tension, it wants to uncoil on you. 
How will you know when it's good? When you can count this white line going around 11 times. Oh my goodness. Do not joke about that. How was that? That was intense. Really? Uh, it's just nerve wracking because we're dealing with a lot of force. Yeah. And as you can see, we didn't even try to lift up the door. Yeah. So. Also, our uh, our weather seal, our perimeter seal, is much too tight, yeah. so we need to like pop that off. So even after we get this one done, the door probably won't go up anyway. <laughs> uh, what's going on here? That's kid. Springs break. I know that. My grandparents broke on their house, even though it was like old and used. <sighs> Take that, garage door guys. <laughs> I know you guys are all talking smack in the comments right now. <laughs> Still haven't mounted the back of our track yet, but I'm getting there. I guess there's only one way to check if our spring tension is. Oh, this is it. Tension enough. But it's happening. I probably shouldn't do this. That's the test. That's it. Is that it hovers? Oh, it's it doesn't go up, doesn't go down. Very scary. No, it, it works. Cool. It's good. We basically just have to get these supports at the end of the track done. Okay. And then we could like literally lift it up and. Cool. Open the door. It's a very exciting day here at Trenton Alley. I mean, I think so. Perfect timing. Against all odds, the first garage door is fully installed braced, blocked, framed, whatever you want to call it. And I think we are almost ready to test it. This is our garage door opener. Very long. Yeah. Might be better than nothing. <laughs> Everything on our house is super high tech, uh, except for this rope. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Ah, that's cool. It's broken. It's broken? Yeah. No. That is. What do you mean? Those wheels are like grinding on those bolts. I would call that a success. We're gonna do some fine tuning and tweaking to make it nice and smooth and seamless, but not bad for two guys that have never done this before. Yeah, it was okay. In the manual that I was reading, the instructions, it had these two brackets with like the tabs facing inwards. So that's how I mounted them. And now those wheels are like barely at one point touching those lags. Mm -hmm. Whereas if those brackets were reversed, mm -hmm. the lags would be on the outside and we wouldn't have that issue. So almost flawless victory, <laughs> but reading the instructions failed me. <laughs> well, I will say that we did have a small victory, yeah. which was to get the garage door installed there's some tweaks and some adjustments that still need to happen and obviously we still need to put the second door up and then the openers on both of them which not super excited about but we'll get there when we get there we have not fully celebrated trent's birthday and it's hard because it's the day after christmas so it always gets rolled into family things and christmas events so tonight we're going out for dinner with another friend to celebrate a little bit of birthday festivity <laughs> Anyway, if you guys enjoyed coming along on today's adventure, make sure you guys show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys, we love you. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.